Hi, I'm John Cran with JimFeist.com. Going to take a look at the 2017 Big Ten college football season with the season fast approaching. First, I want to tell you about Jim Feist's special, early bird special. You can get the entire NFL preseason for 29 bucks. That's going to include Jim's preseason game of the year. Just call 866 546 Nine four six seven. All right, let's get into the Big Ten for 2017. You know, last season we saw Ohio State, normally the perennial power here. They didn't make the Big Ten title game because of a couple of losses. The big one to Penn State during the regular season, 24 to 21. They finished eight and one in the conference. Penn State was the surprise team squeaking in. Michigan was seven and two in Wisconsin. Seven and two won the West. Penn State beat Wisconsin thirty-eight to thirty-one in the Big Ten title game as a three-point underdog. Then they lost a wild one to USC in the Rose Bowl, fifty-two to forty-nine. Wisconsin won a game in the bowl game, beating Western Michigan. But overall, the Big Ten was three and seven in the bowl game, so plenty to prove for a lot of teams in the Big Ten. We're going to start with the Big Ten East Division. I'll start with Ohio State, another powerful season of 11-2 and two straight up, just 6-7 and seven against the Las Vegas number, 8-1 and one in the Big Ten. The defeat to Penn State was the only conference defeat the last three years under Urban Meyer, 37-4 and four straight up, 22-19 and 19 against the spread. Meyer is shaking up the coaching staff a little bit. They bring in Ryan Day to serve as co-offensive coordinator. He was the quarterback coach along with former Indiana head coach Kevin Wilson is going to help run the attack at Indiana. Wilson ran wide open, no huddle spread attacks. So that's going to be interesting. The returning offense for the Buckeyes, six on offense, seven on defense. They're on a nine and four run under the total because of a powerhouse defense. But the offense was very strong last year, 39.4 points per game. That was 13th in the nation with perfect balance that Meyer likes. 245 yards rushing, 213 yards passing per game. And they got senior quarterback J.T. Barrett back. He is the Heisman Trophy winner favorite in Las Vegas at 4-1. to one. He is a senior. Last year as a junior, 24 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 2,555 yards passing, 61.5% completions. Plus, he ran for 845 yards, a dual threat, 4.1 yards per carry. But he's not alone. They got sophomore running back Demario McCall. 270 yards rushing, but five and a half yards per carry. He's going to step in. They do have four offensive linemen back. There's a weak spot with the Ohio State offensive line. They struggled at times, and so we're seeing some of the players on the O-line being shifted around in spring and summer. Now, you got a team that puts up great offensive numbers overall. However, in their two big games, 21 points they scored against Penn State. That was not enough. And the bowl game against Clemson, zero points. So clearly that's why some of the changes were made by Meyer. The defense has been dominant for the Buckeyes the last two years. Two years ago, they gave up 14 points per game. That was second in the nation. And then last year, almost the same, 14.2 points per game, third in the nation. And Urban Meyer's team this year is absolutely loaded with pass rushes. You got junior Sam Hubbard has a lot of speed, and he's not alone. They got Jalen Holmes, senior Twyquan Lewis, and sophomores Nick Bosa and Draymond Jones. So with the Buckeyes' great offense, you can see them getting ahead in games, and then Meyer's going to unleash the pass-rushing ability. So they've got a lot of things in place to have a dominant season. The one, one other weak spot, though, would be the secondary. Three new starters in the secondary. Ohio State with that offense on a 33-22 and 22 run over the total, and they've been dominant on the road the last two years under Meyer, both straight up and against the spread. 17 and 2 straight up, 12 and 6 against the spread. Look at the Buckeyes' schedule for 2017. They're going to open Big Ten play on the road at Indiana August 31st against a team that gave them a scare two years ago. And then they come home to play Oklahoma on September 9th, so a couple of two early season games. This was a team, though, they won at Oklahoma last year. 45 to 24 in a blowout. And of course, at the game against Penn State, they were 17 and a half point favorite and lost 24 to 21 on the road. They get them at home as well as Michigan, which was a 30 to 27. I'm sorry, they're going to be at Michigan this year. That was a 30 to 27 squeaker. 
Let's move on to the Michigan Wolverines. Jim Harbaugh has built a powerhouse program in a very short time off a 10-3 and three season straight up, 7-2 and two in Big Ten play, 6-7 and seven against the spread. They were 9-4 and four over the total last year with a dominant offense that was 11th in the nation in scoring as part of a 17-4 and four run over the total for the Wolverines. They got four starters back on offense and four on defense, so there's some retooling to do. And remember last year, Michigan started a perfect 9-0 and oh and then finished 1-3. and three. Overall, they lose 17 starters. So you got an offense that averaged just over 40 points per game with great balance, 213 yards passing, 212 in rushing. Senior quarterback is back in 6'6", Wilton Speed, 18 touchdowns and 17 into, uh, seven interceptions. He benefited from the best receiving core in the Big Ten. However, they lose their top pass catchers. And when they faced Ohio State, he had two touchdowns and two picks. And then the bowl game against Florida State, only one touchdown and one interception. That was a loss to Florida State, 33-32. to And now he's got to work with some new receivers. And don't forget, when they lost that game at Iowa, he struggled too. No touchdowns and one interception. So how's he going to do with some new receivers? Well, we're going to take a look at a sophomore wide receiver in Kikoa Crawford. Had a little bit of a time with 47 yards as well as Eddie McDoom, who had 59 yards. And Michigan brought in some young guys to try and help this team. And the biggest one will be a five-star prospect in Donovan Peoples-Jones, one of the highest-rated recruiters in the country. Got to believe he's going to be thrown in there as, as well. But there will be balance on this Michigan offense, as Jim Harbaugh likes it. Sophomore running back Chris Evans is back, 614 yards rushing, a whopping seven yards per carry. They do lose three seniors from the offensive line. You got center Mason Cole and guard Ben Breederson. Uh, overall, Harbaugh has been terrific at building offensive lines. Plus, he's got senior Patrick Kugler and a four-star freshman Cesar Ruiz coming in. So there's a lot of talent, although there is very little experience at the tackle positions. The Michigan defense was dominant last year, 12.5 points per game, number two in the country. They got sophomore Rashawn Gary and redshirt senior Maurice Hurst, terrific on the defensive line. You got Carlos Demps and Donovan Jeter. They've shown some flashes, but really there's some newcomers overall. Can't see a major drop off, though. Secondary is a different story as the entire secondary is gone. So you got a lot of youth in the Wolverine secondary. You got sophomore Levert Hill and David Long going to be thrown in there. The old man of the group is the, the junior safety, Tyrone Kinnell. He is rather reliable. Now the schedule, they're going to open against the Florida Gators. We'll see how good they are early on against the great Florida defense. And then road games for Michigan. Well, they're challenging at Indiana, Penn State, and Wisconsin. Michigan, their last 53 road games, just 25 and 28 straight up, 22 and 31 against the spread. Overall, though, you're going to be looking at a team with 10-plus wins in the hunt for the Big Ten title. And now we move to Penn State, the surprise team last year, 11-3, and straight up 8-1 and in the conference with that big win against Ohio State. They were 8-4-1 and against the spread, as well as 10-3-1 and over the total. You know, James Franklin, he was terrific at developing defenses while at Vanderbilt and here in Penn State, but he never had really good offenses until last season. They really exploded as part of the recruiting classes that he has brought in five consecutive top 25, and everything clicked on offense last year. They exploded for 37.6 points per game. That was 21st in the nation. Great balance, 260 yards passing, 172 yards rushing. Joe Moorhead, the offensive coordinator, likes to run an up-tempo attack. And boy, does he have some talent coming back. The super softs are back with junior quarterback Trace McSorley. As a sophomore, 29 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, over 3,600 yards passing. And junior running back Saquon Barkley was an absolute beast. 5.5 yards per carry, 1,496 yards rushing, as well as 18 touchdown passes. He was dynamite as a freshman, too. And Barkley, 72, missed tackles, forced. Well, that was fourth most in the nation. So this is a dynamite one-two punch. They have an offense. And they have some terrific experience at wide receivers. He got senior Deshaun Hamilton back. He had 506 yards, as well as DeAndre Tompkins, who had 440 yards. And the defense under Franklin has been strong for quite a few years, and they were very good last year, 23.4 points per game to augment this explosive offense. That was 35th in the nation in points allowed. 
You got linebackers Jason Cabinda and Manny Bowen back. They do need some depth, and they weren't a great pass rushing team. That's going to be a concern. In the secondary, John Reed is a cornerback who had a difficult knee injury in spring training, uh, spring practice, and it doesn't look good. He may miss some time as a possibility. He might miss the entire season. That's a key blow. The secondary does have safety Marcus Allen Bath, who was terrific, as well as cornerback Grant Haley. Penn State did allow 47.7 points per game in three losses to Michigan, Pittsburgh, and USC. So they were kind of hit and miss at times. The schedule for the Nittany Lions, big revenge game is early against Pitt. That was a game they lost 42-39 to in a shootout. That'll be week two this year. They've got some road games that are not easy at Northwestern, at Iowa, at Ohio State, and then at Michigan State. Always a tough battle. Keep in mind, Penn State, if you like to play totals, 36-23 in one run over the total. They're going to be very strong again. Really, it's those big three they are going to be battling for the Big Ten title probably again. We will take a look now at Michigan State. Boy, things, they dropped off the face of the earth last year. We knew the Spartans were rebuilding, but they had a terrible campaign of 3-9 and nine straight up. Only one win in Big 12, Big Ten play. And that translated into some bad spread mark two, four and eight against the spread. And that continues the trend now. Nine seventeen spread run. So you're talking about a team that went twelve and two to three and nine straight up. While there is some experience returning for the Spartans, seven on offense, seven on defense. Remember this team a year ago started two and oh, and they won at Notre Dame as a seven point underdog, thirty six to twenty eight, but it was all downhill after that, a one and nine finish. Unfortunately, once again, they're gonna be one of the youngest teams in the conference the Spartan offense last year just 24 points per game that was 104th in the nation 222 yards passing 172.7 yards rushing but not great in the red zone they're going to have a sophomore quarterback returning in Brian Lewerke two touchdowns one pick 381 yards he started three games before breaking a leg it does look like the starter although they have the senior Damian Terracy or Damian Terry returning 253 yards passing, but he's penciled in as the backup. Unfortunately, in the offensive line, three starters are gone. They do have guard Brian Allen returning, as well as junior running back L.J. Scott, who's terrific. 994 yards last year, 5.4 yards per carry. Throw in Gerald Holmes, 431 yards, 4.7 yards per carry. It's really the best running back tandem in the Big Ten if they can get this offensive line squared away, as well as open up the passing game a little bit. Now, the Michigan State defense dropped to 27.8 points per game. A young unit was 60th in the nation in points allowed. And the offense had no pass rush at all. 11 total sacks in 12 games. Difficult to look at the strength being up front. So we'll look at the linebacker core. Should be solid. You got John Reschke and Chris Fry. Plus, Andrew Dowell is on the rise. And they got Brian Bullough, who should be in there. But then you got a lot of youth behind them. And three starters are gone in the defensive secondary, too. The only guy is Justin Lane with returning defensive back experience. So despite struggling last year with a lot of youth, they're going to be a very young team again on both sides of the ball. The schedule for the Michigan State Spartans, four home games to start the year, including Notre Dame September 23rd and Iowa in week four. So they'll be tested in September. And then you got some road games that are very difficult. Minnesota at Michigan at Northwestern and Ohio State, all of which means a winning season is probably going to be difficult. And keep in mind the Spartans at home, they've been money burners against the Vegas number, 32-44 and 44 spread run their last 76 home games. They're also on a 15-9 and nine run under the total. All right, let's move on to the Indiana Hoosiers. They improved to six wins last year, making a bowl game at 6-7, and 4-5 and five in the conference, 6-7 and seven against the spread. And despite the fact that they play no huddle up tempo offenses with a weak defenses, yeah, you're 30 and 20 run over the total going back a few years. But last year, the odds makers vastly over adjusted and Indiana was nine and three under the total. That's because of an improved defense and the offense slipped significantly. You got Kevin Wilson in his sixth year. Tom Allen is defensive coordinator. He was formerly at South Florida and he improved the defense last season. You got this offense. Slipped dramatically for Indiana, despite going no huddle a lot, 25.8 points per game. They slipped from number 24 in the nation two years ago to 88 in points allowed, although they did have plenty of yards, 273.8 yards passing, 152 yards rushing per game. 
They do lose their top running back and a couple of strong offensive linemen. They got a new offensive coordinator in Mike DeBoard. He was with the Tennessee Volunteers, although he says he wants to keep the exact same style, which is up-tempo and no huddle. The problem for the Indiana offense is that they struggle badly in the red zone, converting only 71.4% of red zone opportunities. So they move the ball in the middle of the field. But once they get the red zone, they finish badly when it comes to putting the ball in the end zone. Good news is they do have senior quarterback Richard Legal back. He's six foot six and had 19 touchdown passes, but 17 interceptions. That was a big part of their problems in the red zone. Over 330, 300, he had 3,362 yards passing. He began his career at Connecticut before transferring to Oklahoma State, so he's been all over the map. They do have a very good senior running back in Camion Patrick back, although he's back from an injury. And he's been pretty good out of the backfield as well. And then the ride receiving core, you got 6'3 junior Nick Westbrook. He had 995 yards and a whopping 18.4 yards per catch. Very talented, a wide house. So this offense should be better if they can solve their red zone problems. The defense, 27.3 points per game. That was 57th in the country, a whopping improvement from the 37.1 per points per game they allowed two years ago, which was 116th in the country. They play that 4-2-5 scheme that Allen brought in and will stick to it. They do lose some of their top players on the defensive line. That's probably going to be a weak spot. But they do have uh, a secondary problems, too, with speedy quarterback Rashad Fant. He's back for a, another season. He's a very strong player. Linebacker Tagurl scales his back. He led the Big Ten in tackles, but overall depth is a concern. But still, they improve markedly under this 4-2-5 scheme. The Indiana schedule, they're going to open at home against Ohio State. A very tough opener. That'll be August 31st, a Thursday game. They're going to have to play a road game at Virginia. Some of their road games are not easy at Penn State. Michigan State, Maryland, Illinois, and Purdue would be easier. But still, hard to see them breaking into the Big Three of the Big Ten, so they have to be shooting for a 500 season and another bowl game. Let's take a look at the Maryland Terrapins. They improved to six wins last year, six and seven straight up, just three and six in conference play, but four and nine against the spread. The team that was seven and four under the total. Returning offense, six on offense, six on defense, and look at their win total the last six years: two, four, seven, seven, three, and six. So they're slowly getting there. They are under their second year. Under coach D.J. Durkin, he used to be the defensive coordinator at Michigan back in 2015. So he went from three wins to six. They made it to the Cotton Bowl, lost 36-30 to to Boston College. The big improvement was with the offensive coordinator, Mike London. He helped to cut down the turnovers where they were dreadful two years ago. The quarterbacks went 15 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Huge improvement. And because of that, they averaged 25.8 points per game. That was 88th in the nation. And not a lot of yards, 170 yards passing, but they went to the ground game more and were very good. Almost 200 yards rushing per game. Problem for Maryland this year is a new quarterback will be behind center. We're not sure who that's going to be either. They got North Carolina transfer, Callum Henderson. They got a returning sophomore in Terrell Pigrom, 322 yards in a limited role. And he's got some competition with sophomore Max Bordenschlager, 209 yards per game. Pigrom and Bortenschlag both saw some time last year, but neither really was that strong. And they also have freshman quarterback, Kasem Hill. He's going to be in campus sometime around the fall, and he was a former Gatorade Player of the Year in Alabama. He's very good at running the spread offense, but doesn't have a lot of experience. Pass protection for the Terrapins was a major problem, which is why they went to the ground game so much. Maryland gave up 49 sacks last year in 30, 13 games, just dreadful. Running backs, though, are, are dynamite. They were fourth in the Big Ten in rushing, and they returned junior running back Ty Johnson, just over 1,000 yards, over eight yards per carry. You got Lorenzo Harrison, 7.2 yards per carry. So Maryland is really bursting with playmakers in the backfield. They have junior wide receiver DJ Moore is back. He led the team with 637 yards. So it's a pretty good skill position, guys, returning. The defense allowed 29 points per game. That was an improvement, 71st in the nation. Two years ago, they were 103rd in the nation, over 34 points per game. The run defense, though, is still a problem. They are allowed 218 yards rushing per game, and that'll be a problem again as they lost their top three defensive linemen. You get seniors Chandler Burkett and Jesse 
Anna Boehm back. Anna Boehm had nine sacks, but the secondary is extremely young and it was inconsistent with some of the returnee starters, so they probably could struggle in the secondary once again. The schedule for Maryland, big test early. They're going to open at Texas, and they got some tough, tough road games at Minnesota, at Ohio State, at Wisconsin, and at Michigan State. So again, probably look for a 500 team uh, at best and maybe a bowl game. All right, let's take a look at the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Rebuilding last year, 2-10 and ten straight up, winless in Big Ten play under the first-year coach, Chris Ash. They were 4-8 and eight against the spread, which means Rutgers the last two years, 8-16 and 16 against the spread. A lot of returning talent, uh, returning experience as they went with the kids last year, 9 on offense, 8 on defense. Ash is a former defensive coordinator at Ohio State, and they bring in Jerry Kill to help run the offense. He has done wonders where he's been, including Minnesota. A nice upgrade because this offense was dreadful last year. 15.7 points per game, 127th in the nation. And look at these numbers, 138 yards passing, 145 yards rushing. They were 128 in total offense. And they've got a new quarterback in Jonathan Lewis. He is a talented dual threat, probably unleashed. And they have a couple of transfers who come in, brothers, the Mitchell brothers, Amir and Damon. Amir comes in from Michigan and Damon from Arkansas. Certainly going to upgrade the passing attack. Although Amir had an injury in the spring and he is doubtful for the season and may be back, but he's that's an injury to keep in mind. And then you got Damon from Arkansas who's going to help out as well as the sophomore returnee, Jawan Harris, had 481 yards. And they got Janarian Grant who kind of does it all. He's a, a good playmaker, largely a kick returner. He's back from an ankle injury. They hope to be healthy with these two guys. Senior running back Rob Martin returns. Pretty good running back. 625 yards, 5.2 yards per carry. So there is some talent returning and some improvement likely. However, will there be improvement with the Rutgers defense? Boy, were they terrible last year. 37.5 points per game. That was 116th in the nation. The Big Ten worst 450.7 total yards per game. Do have some pluses with linebacker Deontay Roberts returning. And the secondary at least has some experience with a couple of two-year starters in cornerback Isaiah Wharton and Bluson Austin. But overall, a young team that struggled badly. The schedule for Rutgers, not so easy. They're going to open at home against Washington. They played the Huskies a year ago on the road, lost 48-13. to And they got some road games at Nebraska, at Michigan, at Illinois, at Penn State, Indiana, and that game against Indiana last year was a 55-52 to 52 shootout. That was two years ago, 55-52 over the total by 41 points. And then last year we saw the same thing, a 33-27 to 27 shootout with the Hoosiers that also sailed over the total of 58.